So this is a gold medal winner from Italy. This is his first two steps. So what we're going to talk about in the next couple of slides is we'll, we'll keep coming back to this is everything, but these pretty cool shoes, which I'm sure help, but um, we'll be talking about just some of the technical things that I'm looking at from the start. I really love this start. I'll play it one time slow. Okay. So I'm going to go through this pretty calculated uh, graphic here. So let's ignore everything at the top. For now, let's look at the first picture on the left when he's in blocks. Um, what you'll see here is his hips are higher than his head. If, if this is, you know, if you're a team sport coach, this doesn't matter too much, but it's still good to know. Uh, hips higher than the head. Uh, we call this the upside down torso. We call this the Michael Phelps position. We think about jumping in a pool from this point. The next slide over, you'll see his torso rise by about 10%. And um, what we're looking at here is two things. So the first thing is torso projection. So how far can your torso project horizontally? That's goal number one. And also we're looking at how far does that hip project? So when you look at that top left corner, you look at where his hip finishes, his hip is projecting about a meter forward. So I know that if I can get torso and hip projection, that means I'm setting myself up initially at the start to produce a large horizontal um, push from, from the start. So what I look at here is more technical on this side when I'm looking at it, um, breaking an athlete down if I am doing something technical, because these first couple steps are gonna dictate how my next steps go. So I can't have a good transition if I have a poor acceleration. Um, you can't have a good velocity if you just build up into it or you know something like that. But what we're looking at is really from the start, from zero, how does it look? Then the next step over, we see retraction. So what we're looking at is that shin, Dan Path calls it a shank, is horizontal, is traveling horizontal forward, and then it's traveling horizontal backwards. So if they're able to retract that leg using the hip, so at the, at the bottom of that blue line, that hip swings back into the ground hard, that foot is going to end up in that last slide on the right that's in color in a negative step. It's going to end up behind the hip. So what we call a negative step is trying to get that foot behind the hip. So like when I first tell kids that, like get your foot behind your hip, they don't project. So there's two, there's two pieces. There's, hip and torso projection, and then there's retraction. And that's what's gonna create the negative step. So let's go back and watch it on video one time. So upside down, Michael Phelps posture. The torso projects horizontally. It rises about 10 degrees. Okay, his hip has we call it displacement too. So if you watch the displacement of his hip over the line, and then this is where the negative step comes into play. So the, the leg is going to start reversing once he gets the full toe off. It's going to start reversing backwards into the ground. So when he touches down, the ankle bone is behind the hip. So what that means is he's going to spend less time on the ground because all the time spent on the ground is used towards projecting him horizontally. If the foot lands under the hip, so if the foot were to land here, you would have to spend energy and time basically decelerating the body, the foot until it can push. So stabilizing, absorbing the energy before it pushes. So amortization phase is extremely short when that foot lands behind the hip and most of the body weight is forward. Okay, so that's step one. So looking at, also looking at step one, um, I know a big theme is triple extension. Triple extension doesn't happen. Um, so you'll see like he's got incomplete knee extension. Uh, he's got great hip extension, but the goal shouldn't be triple extension necessarily. It should be getting extension of the hip. 
forceful extension of the hip and the body projecting out horizontal. If you look at the next step on step one, there's even less extension at the knee. So he still has hip extension, but getting too much extension at the knee would take too long on the ground. Uh, so a similar concept for step one to two, you're looking at attacking that foot directly behind the hip as much as possible while projecting the body forward. So he does a good job. Um, on the bottom left, what you'll see is his shin is opening a little bit more than the initial shin, but it's still his ankle bone still behind his knee. Uh, athletes that swing that leg out in front and try to reach for the ground will essentially have an early contact. And that foot will, will be a break step, essentially. It's going to land in front. It's going to be positive. Uh, typically, you look for a positive step later on, maybe step four or five for some guys, um, even later for 100-meter champion, I'm sure. But you definitely don't want that positive on step one. So he's got a good angle there. Uh, notice his torso hasn't changed significantly yet. It's rising just a little bit per step, though. Uh, and then you see the next step, even less extension in the back leg. Uh, you see a good front shin angle, good torso angle, and he still has a negative step. So we'll go back one more time. Look at this. So once he's cleared step one, uh, also see his knees are side by side. So that's the switch. Okay. When he gets to the next step, incomplete knee extension, which is good, hip extension. And then you see the left leg start retracting back towards the ground. And then again, same idea. From toe off, there's less knee extension. He's retracting that back to the ground. Okay, so these two steps, if you can control these two steps, I truthfully believe you can have a decent acceleration through the first 10 steps. Thank you so much for watching this video. Drop a comment down below if you have any questions. Subscribe to the channel so you never miss another video.